All right, hey guys, Dr. Hagmeyer here. You know, I recently received a bunch of emails after my last video asking me if I would talk a little bit more about good or optimal free T3 and total T3 levels. And so it, this is really a great question of really where you wanna see these levels from an optimal standpoint. And so I want to just shoot this quick video and really explain that just a little bit more. But just as with all things thyroid, you know, we don't really have a straightforward answer. Um, and, and let me explain that, what I mean by that. First off, we really need to demystify what are good levels. Are good levels the levels that you see when your lab tests come back uh, from either LabCorp or Quest or some of these other labs? Or are there other ranges that should be used, right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. So let's demystify first what are good levels versus optimal thyroid levels and really who determine what good levels are, right? So there's a few things that you need to know. First and foremost, different lab companies create their own reference ranges based on geographical location, all right? So what that means is that a person who's having lab testing done uh, in New York is going to be compared to other people with thyroid problems in New York. And a lab, let's say, that's out in California is going to compare those lab values to other people who live out in California. Now, another problem with ranges uh, that's worth mentioning and understanding and considering when you're looking at your thyroid levels is that these thyroid lab ranges are based on averages, right? So the average may be people of different ages, different sex, male versus female, and if that person was healthy or if they were sick at the time of testing. So that means that reference range is compiled of both healthy and unhealthy people, all of which can, of course, skew the range. So to break it down, normal reference ranges really is compiled of a bunch of healthy and sick people, men and women, and varies depending on the geographical location of where you live. Now, I don't know about you, but most people who are going to have something tested like their thyroid are not usually going in to have their thyroid levels checked unless they specifically have thyroid problems or maybe they suspect a thyroid problem. So getting your thyroid levels checked is really not part of an annual physical for blood testing, right? There has to be a good reason um, your doctor is having your thyroid checked in the first place, right? So thyroid ranges are really based on sick people with probable thyroid disease, right? Now there's more to this. Research also shows us that the timing of the day also affects your thyroid levels and whether or not you fasted. Right. So you could be someone who, you know, at one point in time gets your levels tested in the morning and then perhaps maybe on another day uh, after work, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, you go to the lab and you have your thyroid levels drawn there as well. So, again, these are all things that can influence your thyroid levels. And this, of course, ultimately can alter your treatment. So keep that in mind when you look at your thyroid levels. You know, I would always recommend that, you know, on your uh, lab report that you write down what time of the day you, you took them. Um, you know, where you took those thyroid levels, how you were feeling, especially how you were feeling uh, at the time that you had those levels done. Now, with all that being said, you can see why thyroid lab ranges really are so confusing to so many doctors and why many people wind up getting overmedicated. This is really why at my clinic we rely on functional lab ranges, right? So functional lab range really is comparing your thyroid lab test results to people who have healthy thyroid levels. We're not comparing your levels to sick people. We want your levels to be in an optimal range, not the sick range. So I encourage you to learn more about functional lab ranges as well as understanding why a complete thyroid panel, including T3 and free T3, is so important. So at the end of this video, make sure you check out the description box because I'll leave a couple links there that can kind of further help, you know, that understanding of those lab ranges. And plus, we're only talking about T3 and, and free T3 today. There are other functional markers for the other thyroid markers as well. And again, I'll leave that description in the box. So the other thing here is if you have your test in front of you, you know, I want to share with you the functional ranges of T3 and free T3 levels. So in other words, where I like to see them, but also where uh, my patients will often tell me where they're feeling good, right? And that becomes something that I think everybody should be considering. Now for your total T3 levels, right? The functional uh, range is between 100 to 180 nanograms per deciliter. Now, most of my patients will feel a lot better when their levels are around 100 to 130 nanograms per deciliter. And what I notice is that when those levels start to get above 130, so 140, 150, 160, 170, many times those patients begin to feel a bit hyperthyroid. Not everybody, but some. Okay, so for free T3 levels, 
we want to see these functional ranges between three and four picograms per milliliter. Picograms per milliliter. That's very, very important to know and, and to distinguish the, um, the measurement that's being used, right? With this free T3 level, most of my patients report feeling good pretty much within that whole range. So anywhere between three and four picograms per milliliter. So that is usually my target, right? With all this being said, I want to leave you with a few closing thoughts about today's video, uh, but also kind of combine some of the things that I talked about uh, in the first part of this video. Number one is that testing free T3 levels and total T3 levels are important, but you never test these by themselves, all right? So if you're wondering, well, I should probably just go get my total T3 and free T3 done. No, you have to look at this, you know, in conjunction uh, with all the other thyroid markers. Now, in my past video, I showed you why you can't rely on TSH levels alone to determine thyroid hormone levels, all right? Your T3 and your free T3 levels. And this is really a big mistake many doctors do. By only testing TSH, they're assuming they know what's happening with the T3, uh, the free T3 and the total T3 levels. And that's not true. We have plenty of research that shows you cannot rely on TSH alone to understand what's happening at the cellular level of thyroid hormones. Number two is that testing your total T3 and your free T3, again, is a part of a comprehensive thyroid panel. So if you haven't had that done, again, check out the description. It kind of lists out uh, all the different thyroid markers that we use typically in our practice. Number three, total T3 and free T3 levels uh, tell you how much of the active hormones you have. And this is the information that can help uh, determine what proper treatment and how to properly manage your thyroid uh, can be. Number four, uh, your total T3 and your free T3 levels, uh, these really should be used, again, in conjunction with other lab tests, right? Your TSH, your T4, total T3, free T3, reverse T3, thyroid binding globulin, and your thyroid antibodies. But again, I will list that um, in the description box, again, with those links, right? So this, again, just ultimately gives you the, the most complete picture as it relates to thyroid function. Okay, well, there you go. I know we covered a lot of information today. If there's anything you know you have questions about um, or you need something else to be cleared up, um, drop me a line in the comment below, right? I want to hear from you guys. What's been your experience? Um, have you had your T3 levels checked? Have you had your free T3 levels checked? Do you find that you feel better within a certain range, uh, like those functional ranges that I mentioned? I'd be interested in hearing what you have to say. Now, also, if you have any questions or comments and uh, you are a subscriber to my YouTube channel, uh, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Right? Till next time, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. Take care. <music>